Sputnik is a family comedy from 2013. Uh, what? It's the wrong movie. It is? Yep. Sputnik is not a family film, but a Russian horror movie directed by Igor Abramenko. Seriously, don't let your kids watch this. This movie is set in Soviet Russia 1983. Cosmonaut Konstantin Veshnikov returns from orbit back to Earth with a dead co-pilot and a case of amnesia, only to be confined to a secure military facility. He is examined by disgraced neuropsychologist Tatyana, who soon discovers a horrifying secret. During the day, the cosmonaut seems fine, but at night, the truth literally comes out in the shape of a creepy-looking alien. I like this film. It's not super original and it definitely has some issues, but it deserves a lot more attention than it's getting. <laughs> the budget for this movie was a measly two and a half million dollars, but they did an outstanding job creating the look of a big budget movie, which I think is mainly thanks to the cinematography, which is great. Apart from a few handheld shots, almost every scene is shot on dolly tracks and tripods. And that gives it a grounded look, almost David Fincher-like. A lot of movies these days heavily use the shaky camera shot, which I'm not a big fan of, especially when you combine it with fast editing. I'm an editor myself and I hate it, so this was a nice change of pace. And I was also surprised about the visual effects. For a low budget film, they look pretty damn good. The creature design isn't groundbreaking or anything, I mean, it's no xenomorph, and none of the effects were done practically, but it's creepy enough for it to work, and there's something innately upsetting about staring into multiple set of eyes. I don't know much about Russian cinema, but this lady can act, and you need someone like that to elevate the story, because this movie takes place mostly in one location. Much like my current situation. Oksana Akinshina, the actress who played the neuropsychologist, pretty much carries the film. In the first act, her character is very cold and standoffish, but as the story progresses, she becomes more emotionally involved with the astronaut. Her co-star, Pyotr Fyodorov, does a good job as well, but she is definitely the main protagonist. And the first act is wonderful. It's slower paced and it just builds up tension. And this movie does something I think more filmmakers should do, which is leaving out the soundtrack at certain moments. Sometimes there's a lot more suspense when you cut out the music from a scene. Because without a soundtrack, it makes you feel like this is real. I don't know whose decision it was, the editor or the director, but it was a good choice. A lot of horror movies get this wrong, or they use the silence to set up an annoying jump scare. Now that we're on the subject of soundtrack, the one used in this film is really, really good. But it's also, um, how do I put this? Stolen. The main theme from this movie is called The Beast by the late composer Johan Johansson, and it's from the soundtrack of Sicario. I can only let you hear a short clip or I'll get demonetized, but here you go. And as I mentioned earlier, I do have some issues with this movie because the first act is excellent, especially how it builds tension and the way the movie feeds you information. I think I've said it before, storytelling is all about controlling the flow of information. And it does this really well in the first half, but towards the ending of the film, it just kind of devolves into an action movie. At a certain point, it sort of loses its mystery, and that is what made the movie work for me. But nonetheless, I still really enjoyed watching this, so Sputnik gets four out of six. It is so fucking hot in here, it's not even fun. It's a little funny.